Hey everybody, I am Heather and I am the GA Consultant at National WMU and I am so excited to welcome you to my home and um, hang out with you guys for a few minutes as we talk about what's going on in um, Girls in Action this week. This is week four of March and so I am so excited that you're joining me today as so we can um, learn more together about Mike Palmer and the Cowboy Church there in Idaho and especially make some really cool crafts together today. That's what I've got in store for us. So as you're joining in, if you would go ahead and let me know who you are and where you are. I love to do shout outs. If you've got your GA with you, I'd love for you to drop their name if you'd like to um, there in the comment box and I would love to shout out to them as we're going through today's lesson. So, GAs, we always start. Hey, Addie is back from Texas. I'm so glad you're here, Addie. And Melissa from Kentucky and Kay from Georgia. Y'all are making me so happy. Thanks for joining in and thanks for chiming in and letting me know who's here. So, as uh, GAs, we usually uh, we recommend that you start your GA lesson each week with a GA pledge. I realized after our live was over with last week that I did not do that. Shame on me. So let's start with our GA pledge today. If you would join me, GAs, as we say our pledge together. As a GA, I will do my best to live a missions lifestyle that honors God by learning about missions, praying for missions, giving to missions, doing missions, and participating in the work of the church. Now, my girls at my church, the way we learned the GA pledge was we kind of made it into a little cheer or a chant. And we, we have hand motions that go with it about learning about missions, praying for missions, giving to missions, and then this one's kind of silly, but it works, doing missions and participating in the work of the church. I know it's kind of silly, but that's the way my girls remembered it, so that's the way we've always done it. I don't care how you do your GA pledge. If you do it as a chant, maybe some of you have turned it into a great song. Whatever you do, just make sure you, you are focused on those parts of the pledge that tell us that what we as GA should be doing. We should always be learning about missions, praying for missions, giving to missions, doing missions, and participating in the work of the church. Okay, guys, thank you for joining me with our GA pledge today. Okay, so what have you been doing this week? It's been a full week since you and I talked. Today is Wednesday, and I'm thankful it's Wednesday. But what have you been doing? A lot of us have been stuck at home. And I've been working at home um, the past week. Some of your parents may have been working from home, too. So what have you been doing to stay busy? A lot of you have, have, have had some schoolwork to do, maybe over the Internet. That's pretty cool. My son has had videos and things to watch for school and, and supposed to be giving some um, responses back to those. That's pretty cool. Have you, any of you read any good books? Have any of you watched some really cool shows on TV, maybe, or found something interesting on the Internet? Well, today I, we want to make some crafts together and do some things together that will help you um, spend some really cool time thinking about other people and how you can share God's love with them. Let's see who all has checked in with me so far so we can do some shout outs. I'm just going to look through here and see who's here. Oh my gracious, there's several of us here. Wow! Kenley from South Carolina, Kaylee and Carly from Florida, Sam from Georgia, Jocelyn from North Carolina is back, and Diane, oh great, Diane from Texas is here. Aubrey from South Carolina, Maddie from Texas, Suzanne from Alabama is here, great Suzanne. Addie from North Carolina, and Addison from Florence, Mississippi. There's a ton of us here. This is great. My friend Susan from Kentucky is here. Hi, Susan. Le uh, Leah from Texas, Charlotte in Alabama, and Lamar in Alabama. Great. Hey, Julie, it's good to see you too. And Lisa. Oh, this is so fun. Fran is here, and Sally from Kentucky. And Marsha from Lawrence, Kansas. Hey, Marsha, it's good to see you. I hope your girls from Southern, First Southern Baptist and Lawrence are getting to watch, too. They're so, this is so cool. Carrie from Maryland is a GA leader. Great. Thank you all so much for checking in and letting me know who's all here. If you haven't checked in, go ahead and check in so I can see your name and give you a shout out. I'm glad you're with us. 
So we've already done our GA pledge, and we've already talked about we need to stay super busy during this time, but we need to stay busy with good things. We need to be thinking about what God would have us do during this time. And I know that one, one thing that we can do is we can focus on Scripture. Now this month, let me grab my poster, hang on. This month in our March unit, we have been focused on Matthew 9, 13. Look at this verse with me. Go and learn what this means. I want mercy, not sacrifice. I have not come to get those who think they're right with God to follow me. Now pay attention because this is the important part. I have come to get sinners to follow me. Matthew 9, 13. Man, that's an awesome verse. Christ wants us, all of us, to follow him. He doesn't just want some of us. He wants all all of us to follow him. He says at the very end, I have come to get sinners to follow me. That's pretty cool. So I know during this time when maybe we're looking for things to do, we can focus on scripture. And I would urge you, if you haven't already memorized your March scripture verse, that is a great one to memorize. You know, GAs, we need to hide God's word in our heart. And that means that we memorize his word. So when we need it later in life or when we want to recall it, we've got it right there with us. Hey, Bailey's just checked in with us from Texas and Elena from Mississippi. I'm glad you guys are with us. So this month we have been talking about Mike Palmer. Let me see if I can get him in front of the camera for you. There he is. Our friend Mike. Pastor Mike has started a cowboy church there in the Limha River Valley called uh, the Limha River Cowboy Church. Yep. It's about 12 years old there, and the church is going strong and growing um, and learning together. And they've been doing baptism. So one of the things I wanted to show you or I wanted to remind you of... Um, Hey, guys that are checking in, thanks so much. Some things to remind you of from our um, lesson this week, this month, is... Let's see if you can see that. Isn't that cow beautiful? Read this out loud for me, GAs. Cowboy church is for people who may not feel comfortable going to a traditional church. I love that. I love that God makes churches... To, for of all kinds, for all kinds of people, so they can come and hear God's word and feel comfortable while they do it. Here's another one I want us to remind, of, remind us of. A cowboy church may meet in a rodeo arena, a metal building, or a barn. Wow, going to church in a barn. That's pretty cool. Some of you, for, some of you may have been to a cowboy church before, and you know it's true. They're meeting in barns and rodeos. Here's another one. People who go to cowboy church are often baptized in a river or in a tank for watering horses. Did you read that one out loud with me? Now look, look at this one. Remember this picture from last week? We said Pastor Mike was baptizing someone in a river. That, my friends, is awesome. Very awesome. And then here's the last one I want to remind us of this week. Limha River Cowboy Church is located in a small community where fewer than 200 people live. That's a very small community. Some of you may live in a, a town that size. So there's not a lot of folks there. But it's super important that even though there's not a lot of people there, they all need to hear and learn about Jesus. So I'm glad that Pastor Mike is there doing that kind of work. Now, adults on WMU.com slash children, I loaded some more um, pages for you. Let me see if I can find. Out of GA World, I loaded this one this week, Cowboy Code. Now, guys, I would love for you to go to WMU.com slash children and find these pages and download these for your, for your GAs. Now, GAs, when you're working on this one, maybe later this afternoon, you're taking time to work on this one, what I'd love for you to do is I'd love for you to take a screenshot of this and get your parents to send me or get your adult to send me a picture of you working on this one. And the way that what this one is, is this, this is about, let me read the directions to you. Remember it says, one day Jesus and his disciples had dinner at Matthew's house. Matthew was a tax collector. Many other tax collectors and sinners ate dinner with them. And the Pharisees saw this. They were upset. They asked Jesus' disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? 
So on this on this printout, what I want you to do when you print this one out, or maybe you're just looking at it online, that's okay too. I want you to use the code. The directions are right there. Use the code to find out how Jesus answered their question. Write the missing letters on the line. Now all of our vowels are there for us. A E I O U. So just fill it in. So I see a go and a G and a, and a shirt. I know that shirt is the O. So go. Uh oh. Does that sound familiar? Go and L, that cow hat is an E, A, R, N. Go and learn are those first ones. So when you guys are doing this later this afternoon with your adult, you've got a good start. Go and learn. Okay? And we're going to find out what Jesus said to the sinners there. I think you've probably already heard that today before, uh, maybe in our scripture. But it will be great to go back and remember that again. Okay. I've got a fun project for us, and I've got it out of GA World. It's there on those printouts for you. Today, I want us to design our own bolo tie. The instructions are all there for you, and if you can't tell, I'm wearing my beautiful bolo tie. See if I can back up a little bit and show it to you. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Now, if I, if I had all the materials in all the world, I might not have used a pizza box. I might have used cardstock, like it said. But hey, I'm at home, and I've got to be creative with the supplies that I've got here. So the, the directions tell us that we need yarn or a piece of leather cord or even a shoelace. Well, I didn't have any leather cord here. I had this string. So I used the string. And it said cardstock. Well, I didn't have any cardstock, so I just used a pizza box. <laughs> yeah, you can use cardboard or you can use a pizza box, whatever you've got. Now, I did have some straws. It asked for straws. I had some plastic straws, so I used those. And then it says I need scissors, and I need a pencil, and markers, and maybe stickers. Hey, guys, you can just be super creative in this. GAs have got this. You got this, okay? So be super creative as you're making your bolo. But one thing I wanted to show you was at the very end of it, it says you can put some beads. Put some beads. But if you look at this, see that? I used masking tape to hold that together so my beads wouldn't slide off. Again, be super creative, okay? On the back, I didn't have enough beads. It asked for a bead on the back. I just used another piece of masking tape. Be super creative as you're making them. And as you make your bolo and you want to share it with me, get mom, get your adult to email it to me at ga at wmu.org. I'd love to see your pictures. I saw some of your pictures from last week, some of your barrel races, and your, your sign that you made for your bedroom. So send me some more this week too. Hey guys, I'd love to see your bolo tie. Just another fun way that we can be cowgirls together, right? Okay. Speaking of cowgirls, I want to know if, you, if your adults saw this. Did your adults see my new color page that we put out for you guys this week she's a super cute cowgirl she is she, and she's got a speech bubble up here what's a speech bubble do you know yeah it's where you put what the character saying yes you're absolutely right good job absolutely and so you can put up there anything that you wanted to put that she could say but what I'd like to challenge you to do with this page, if your adult prints it out for you, if she'll, if your adult will print it for you, color your cowgirl, absolutely, because she's too cute not to color. Color your cowgirl. She's looking like she's getting ready to go out on the range and ride. And then I want you to share her with people that you know. Now, we're not really supposed to be around a lot of people right now, but you know what you can do? You could tape her to your mailbox. And for your mail carrier, so when they deliver your mail, they, they see a cowgirl. Yeah, that would be cool. You could put her on your trash can, so when the trash collectors come by and get your, if you have people that come by and collect your trash, you could leave them a note. That would be super cool. You could put her in the mail to some of your friends or family that you can't see right now. That would be super cool to send some mail. There's lots of ways that you can use our really cute cowgirl. But let's think about her for a second. It'd be fun to keep her on the fridge, absolutely, or, or put her with your other coloring pages that you've colored. I think sharing her is probably the best since we're GAs. But because we're GAs, we want people to know about who. Let me hear you. Yeah. 
We want people to know about Jesus. We specifically want them to know how much Jesus loves them, don't we? Yeah, super cool. So I think up here in my speech bubble, when I color mine, I'm going to write, Jesus loves you. It could be that easy. Yeah, it could be. You know what else we could do? We could put, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Hey, you might even put your church's name. I go to a church named Wilsonville Baptist Church. So I could put, Wilsonville Baptist Church loves you. And so does Jesus. Super big. Or we'd love to have you come to Wilsonville Baptist Church. I could, that, there's room right here. I could even write that. And then you know what? There's always room on the back to write something too. So get busy coloring your cowgirls. Send, them, send me pictures of your cowgirls. I'd love for your parents or your adults to take pictures of you. And then show me how you used her and where you put her. And what is, I especially want, can't wait to see what you wrote in the speech bubble. Okay? Great. I've got a few more friends checking in with us. I'm so glad you're here. People telling us that they, they made the bolos earlier this month with your GAs. It was part of a GA lesson earlier this month. And then they sent them home as prayer reminders. That is so cool. As ways to pray for Pastor Mike. Yes. And as you are wearing your bolo and maybe even your cowboy hat. <laughs> okay. I'm still having fun with that one. Or maybe, oh wait. Or maybe even you're riding on your stick horse. This is a different one than I had last week. This is mine from when I was a little girl. You can remember to pray for Pastor Mike, and you can remember to pray for all his friends in Idaho who are going to the Cowboy Church and learning about Jesus. Super cool. Okay. The last project that we're going to work on together today is the bank. Now, in, it's in the week four lesson that we are supposed to make a bank this week out of a, let me show you the supplies that you need. Hang on. Got too many things on my counter today. Uh, uh, we can use a glass jar. This is just a pickle jar that I washed out and took the label off of. But a jar. You're going to need some tissue paper. Like you put in a present or a bag to make it really pretty, you can get some of that. You're going to need glue. We used some glue last week, didn't we? You're going to need glue. And you're going to need a sponge paintbrush. If you don't have a sponge paint paintbrush, you and your adult can figure out another option for that. You might even use your finger. Let me show you exactly what to do because it was super easy, but I loved it because it turned out so cool. So on your glass jar, you're going to take your, your tissue paper and you're just going to tear little squares. Nothing too big. Can you see that? Nothing too big. Doesn't have to be any specific shape. Doesn't have to be... You know, they don't have to be even. You can cut them and make them even if you want to. But I kind of like them odd shapes. I kind of like them odd shapes. To me, it makes it look, look so pretty. Okay, so I've got several pieces of my tissue paper here, just all torn. And then I'm going to take my sponge brush, and I'm going to put glue on the edge of my sponge. See? Just a little bit. Um, I had an elementary school teacher friend of mine say, a little bit goes a long way. Have you heard that before? And then I'm just going to brush it on. Can you see how I'm brushing? Just brushing it on very easy. And then I'm going to, I'm going to turn this so you can see it. I'm going to pat the piece of paper on. And if you didn't get enough glue, you can go back and put some more on and brush it down. Okay? It's just that super easy. Now, I know that's kind of hard to see because it's, it's light colored, but you can use any color of the tissue paper that you want. And what's going to happen is it's going to turn out to look like this. kind of looks Eastery with the colors that I picked out. It looks a lot like Easter pastels in spring. So you can put them here on, on it. And one thing that you can do is you can write on one of the pieces of paper before you glue it on. I just wrote, I can give. That's just a simple thing, I can give. If your church is collecting for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, you could put Annie Armstrong here and you could save your change for that. I know a lot of churches right now who aren't getting to meet. They've got their, their people in their church saving their change to help with their tithe and their offerings. And you could collect for your church here. You could write the name of your church on it. 
You could also write, if, you, if, you're, if you've got a mission trip coming up for your church, you could write that there. It doesn't matter what you write there. As long as you're save, you've got a place to save your change so you can help your church or you can help missions as um, we're preparing to send more missionaries to the field all the time. Super cool. I'd love to see your pictures of your banks and how well they turned out too. Now, I let this mindset after I finished it. Adults, it didn't take me too long to do this at all, maybe 10 minutes total. And then I let it set somewhere and let it dry out overnight. It probably doesn't even need that long to dry. I just left mine sitting on the counter to dry out. And I think they turned out super sweet. I hope you enjoy that too. Okay, guys. Let's check in and see who else joined us. Oh my gracious, there's so many of you. Katie from Texas, Allie and Anna Kate from Mississippi. Cindy's here. Kathy's here. Kim's here. Kathy is here. Elena is here. There's so many of you. Bailey from Texas. Awesome. Allison from Arkansas. Allison's in third grade. I'm glad you're here, Allison. Uh, Beverly is in Foley, Alabama. Another Texas friend. Oh, this just, it just keeps going. Patty from Kentucky is here. I'm so glad you're here, Patty. Maddie. So many, so many. Cook, my friend Ramona from Cookville. Hey, Ramona. This is great. Well, thank you so much. Somebody said it could be a prayer holder. Yes, the jar could be a prayer holder. Yeah, that's another good idea. You could put your daily prayers in it, or you could put prayer prompts in it. So you could pull them out and pray for a missionary every day or something for your church or something for your family. Absolutely. You could turn this sweet little jar into a lot of different things. Super, super cool. Okay, guys, let's take a few minutes and let's, uh, let's close out our time together in prayer. And then um, I'm going to let you go today, but I can't wait to see what all you've made this week and how you're encouraging other people. Remember, the most important thing that we as Christians can do is tell other people about Jesus. Whether we're six years old or we're 46, like me, or maybe we're 106. Yeah, we've got some, we've got some GAs that might even be 106. No matter how old or how young we are, we can tell people, hey, I'm doing this for you or I'm giving this to you because God loves me and I know that he loves you too. Can you say that? God loves me and I know he loves you too. So let's say it one more time. God loves me and he loves you too. That is so super important as GAs to be able to learn how to say that in the small things that we do and the great big things that we do. That lets people know that God loves them and it helps them come a little bit closer to him. Hey, Patty said she's a 67-year-old GA. Patty, I love your missions heart. Thank you for sharing. Let's, let's close together in prayer. And I'll pray. And as I pray, would you hold hands with the person sitting next to you or hold your hands together real still and think about God and pray with me, okay? Close your eyes and pray with me. Father, thank you so much for GAs all over the country who are learning to love you and who are learning to support missionaries and how they can be on mission as a GA right now in their own town. It is so exciting to know that 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 10 and 11 and 12 year olds can all share your love with the people they meet every day. Father, thank you for GAs, for our churches and for our GA leaders and for the adults in our lives who help us learn more about you. It is so exciting to be able to share your love with your world. Father, I ask that this week you give our GAs plenty of opportunities to share things with people they, they, that they come in contact with, that they talk to, that they get to leave treats for in different places, and that they remember to say, God loves me and he loves you too. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much and thank you for your son, Jesus. Amen. Hey, guys. 
I hope you've had fun today hanging out with me and learning a little bit, rem remembering a little bit about Mike in Idaho and his super cool work there with the Cowboy Church. Today we made our bolo. I'd love to see your bolos, and I'd love to know how you're telling people, what, what are we supposed to say? Do you remember? God loves me, and he loves you too. Okay, guys, I'll see you next Wednesday right here, same place, 2 o'clock. I'll be here. I hope you're here too. Bye, guys.